It had two uh, extraordinarily good women characters. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to get Nomi to play one and Rachel McAdams to play the other. Um, and then I thought that I could uh, make it better by keeping the uh, identity of the murderess from the audience until the end of the movie. And then, of course, I got a chance to put my ballet in. He's my favorite director. Oh. American. Well, the, the financing came out of Germany, and uh, we originally placed the film in London, but after we uh, looked at the London locations and I looked at the German locations, uh, Saeed and I decided to say, why don't we just shoot it in Germany and play Germany for Germany? What an idea! And that's what we did. Uh, we had a fantastic uh, German crew. Uh, everybody was very helpful. Uh, we shot the film in 39 days five days uh, ahead of schedule. It all went extremely smoothly. Don't understand who, who you're talking about. Uh, go ahead, Nomi. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, I think, you know, every time I... Uh... It's kind of, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, every, every part I decide to, to do, and um, every character I, I decide to step into, I have to find a way to, to understand her fully, 100%, to not pretend things, to not come in and fake and, and, and do things that I don't know where, kind of, where to get it from, from myself. So I always have to find a way to translate things from, from me into this person. And for, you know, when I was prepping, um, trying to find Isabel, it was, it hit me that it was really kind of hard for me because she's not driven by, she, she is quite different from everything else I've done because she's, she's kind of mentally um, and, and, and emotionally disturbed. She has a, like a crack inside and she's extremely intelligent and, and she's very, um, uh, good of reading people and, and kind of connect, uh, and collecting information that she's using later on. But that kind of delayed reaction that she's kind of keeping so much inside. Um, and, and the way her thoughts kind of goes... Um, to try to under, understand her inner psychological landscape was really tricky. But, but I, did, um, I was talking to Brian a lot and I was also working with a professor in psychosis and in mental diseases to kind of tr try to understand what kind of diagnose <laughs> she has. Um, but we kind of, we work quite close and kind of discussing and, 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 and working on the script to, to track down um, the relationship between me and Rachel and also to understand my character. Uh, yes, this is very much a, a, a woman's film and all the principal characters are women. Uh, their interaction uh, is worked out between the actresses. Uh, they would do all kinds of, you know, things with each other that would surprise me. And I would happen to be fortunate enough to be around to photograph them. They work extremely well together. You, you know each other quite well. Uh, they played off each other very well. And uh, when Nomi gives her that kiss of death, wow. <laughs> Okay. No, I kind of, um, I really wanted to work with Rachel and I, I, you know, I think she's fantastic. And when Brian came with this um, to me and, and he mentioned Rachel, it felt like, wow, that can be such a dream scenario because it's quite unusual to be given that kind of gift of, you know, getting the opportunity to step into a relationship between two women um, that is not kind of a cute relationship or just friends or because they are so competitive and, and they are kind of raising the game, and it's like a deadly um, manipulative uh, game, between, game between them that kind of twists harder and harder and faster and faster, and they are quite similar, but still um, on different sides. And discovering that together with Rachel and with um, Brian was kind of amazing, but it, it got to my, my brain and my soul. I, was, I, I had the most crazy dreams, and, and I was quite dark inside some days, right? <laughs> He, he is a prophet well, and an icon. <laughs> uh, 
I would say in some ways, yes, because when I made Hi Mom back in the late 60s, you know, I created Be Black Baby, which is uh, the beginning of reality television. And God knows what came out of it. Uh, yes, I'm a very uh, astute observer of the new media forms, the new technologies, and I try to, uh, especially in Redacted, use what they were using on the internet in order to convey their stories and build them into a narrative. Um, and I had worked with Pino many years, going back to Carrie. Uh, I'm take a lot of uh, thought in relationship to selecting what I think is the right type of music for each section. And uh, when I give Pino some idea about what I have in mind, and then he uh, composes the music and, and sends me the things that he thinks will work, and we finally decide what's going to be best for the film. Obviously, in the beginning of the film, the girls are all thinking and getting ready to come up with this new great idea. So we have this dum 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 kind of music. But as the movie goes on, it starts getting more twisted and more sinister and more obsessional until, you know, he writes this fantastic ending uh, for the final dream. Uh, buongiorno intanto. E, e, ho seguito un po' il film, perché la prima parte del film è in modo e poi ci sono gli eventi che cambiano e quindi ho, ho cercato di accompagnare le immagini e seguire poi la suspense sempre di più per aumentare la tensione che già c'era nel film, già fatta da Brian, dagli attori molto bravi, quindi io solo ho seguito un po' le immagini e quello che voleva Brian e penso che il crescendo sia importante perché cambia completamente il film, credo, da metà o da un terzo, un quarto in poi. Quindi la prima parte è leggera apposta, studiata apposta, con i suggerimenti anche di Brian. Siamo sempre in comune accordo, dal primo film a questo che è il settimo. Well, the thriller has always represented for me the ability to tell stories completely visually. You do it with images, you do it with music. Um, and this story uh, gave me the opportunity to extend those uh, abilities in a couple of key sequences. Also, of course, we had the great interaction between the two actresses that gave a kind of emotional basis in order for the visuals to take off from. Well, I think it was something that we talked about and we kind of discovered and, and um, tried out on the day more than something that was really kind of written on the page. But, and also some things, you know, some we did different takes and, you know, some of them were kind of a little bit more um, sexual maybe and some were kind of colder because I think those two women, they use sex as a weapon. It's not, they're not in love and they're not really attracted to each other, but it's one of the tools they, they use against each other and against um, people around them. I think it's a very good thriller, I, you know. If thrillers can win the lion, why not? We are directors looking for good scripts. Uh, this one happened to come from uh, Said uh, out of France. Uh, I, I love living in France. I've made, you know, Femme Fatale when I was living in Paris in the beginning of the 21st century. I like foreign locales. I'm the guy that thought up, well, maybe we should do Mission Impossible all over the world. It was originally written to be done in the Midwest. And I said, but there is a lot of fantastic looking places all over the world. Plus, there are all these fantastically great stars in each country. Why don't we do it that way? Well, just look at me. <laughs> I, uh, like Nomi, in the, char in the character she plays, just wear a suit. I, I mean, the same outfit. I don't really pay much attention to what I wear. However, I have a very acute eye about uh, what people are wearing and uh, what looks good on them. I can't tell you 
who made this suit, but I can tell you that Nomi looks fantastic in it. And uh, that's my ability to sort of choose what I think works visually with the girls. Can I, can I just add something? It's kind of amazing to work with, with Brian because he's so quick. He always know, you know, immediately if you step into a room, yes, no. Like to every, you know, small details, big things. So you're very precise. And I remember we had like costume fittings and we had many like big brands and, you know, designers that I, that I like and, and, and you were so spot on with everything straight away. And Nomi, uh, how much did you, did you get to uh, decide and pick the clothing and, and, and the things that Isabel wears? Because she changes through the film as a character and so her, her, her wardrobe does. Um, yeah, I think um, you gave me a lot of freedom to, to, to kind of find um, what, you know, what kind of dresses or clothes she was wearing. And, and we kind of work quite closely with finding out, you know, when she starts to transform and if it's, uh, you know, she's planning things and when she makes her moves and when she kind of in her whole master plan start to change her outfit. Because the black suit and, and the bangs are so much a uniform and then, you know, she's been dressed like that for many years and then when she starts to, to slowly change into something else, it's small details that you can kind of see and, and they say a lot. Well, I had a, you know, a great film to start with. I had a very good storyline, great characters. And I basically brought a lot of ideas that I thought would improve the material. Uh, and this is basically a sexy murder mystery, and uh, it's got to work as that. You've got to not exactly know who's doing what to whom. Uh, you have to be surprised, you have to be shocked, you should be scared, and you should be laughing, because all those things are working in the movie.